in this video I'm going to show you how to design a new sheep shed or how to lay out an existing sheep shed so as to minimize work, make the best use of space, provide a healthy environment for the sheep and provide a good working environment for the shepherd. Using ideas and layouts from sheep sheds that I've visited around the country I will go through the 10 things that you need to get right when you're planning your sheep shed. These are feed space, floor space, floor type, water troughs, ventilation, passageways, group pens, individual pens, penning and a workstation. Feed space. One of the most common mistakes in sheep shed design is not having enough meal trough space for all of the ewes in the pen to feed at the same time. All too often this lack of meal trough space only becomes apparent after the shed is built. To avoid this mistake work out the required meal trough space before the shed is built. This table shows the feeding space needed per yo when feeding meal and when feeding father. The yo's weight or size will dictate how much meal trough space and father feeding space is required. If there is not enough meal feeding space at the front of the pen then the options include double the feed space by also feeding meal on the external boundary of the shed. To do this the site needs to be sheltered or a windbreaker needs to be used. Place walkthrough troughs between the pens. These take up floor space and can become obstacles when bedding and cleaning out. Place troughs inside the pen. However sheep will get in the way as they rush in to feed. Use a diet feeder to feed a mix of silage and meal. This can reduce the meal feeding space needed but costs more as a diet feeder and a tractor to operate it are needed. Also wider passageways and space for turning is needed at the entrance and at the exit. Floor space. The amount of floor space needed per yo depends on the yo's weight or size, whether the yo is shorn or unshorn, and floor type. Winter shorn yo's require up to 20% less floor area compared to unshorn yo's, while a slatted shed can typically hold 10% more yo's than a bedded shed. Floor type. Before you choose a slatted floor or a bedded concrete floor, you need to consider the cost. Having a slatted floor can greatly increase the cost per yo housed. In some cases, a new slatted sheep shed can cost nearly twice as much as a new sheep shed with a concrete floor. How easy is it to get straw or other bedding material in your area? How much help have you available to help you with bedding both now and into the future? This is a big issue for larger flocks and those with full-time off-farm jobs. If you do go with a bedded shed, what can you do to reduce the labour involved in bedding? Things like using a straw chopper, using a dryer father, using wood chip or increasing the floor space allowed per yo. When you start digging, how far below ground level is the rock, the water table and springs? The presence of these can have a huge impact on building cost and on what is possible and what future problems will arise. What alternative uses do you want to make of your sheep shed during the year? And what future alternative farming and non-farming enterprises are options on your farm and in your area? Slatted floors. Feeding hay or long chopped silage is not ideal when sheep are housed on slats. This is because sheep tend to pull the longer chopped silage or hay onto the slats, causing them to block. If hay or long chopped silage is your only option, then you will have to rake the pulled in fodder off the slats every few days. Using precision or short chop silage avoids this problem. Slats eliminate the labour and the cost involved in bedding. They can offer some reduction in lameness. The extra cost in building a slatted shed means you must have a long term commitment to sheep farming. Those building slatted sheds in recent years have tended to choose plastic slats because they last longer than slats involving timber. They are warmer than concrete slats. They come ready-made and are easy to install compared to expanded metal on timber frames. Slatted tanks and sheep sheds are typically 1.2 to 1.5 metres deep. The external agitation points are typically 1.8 to 2 metres deep. It's important to always include an external agitation point as part of your slatted sheep tank. Firstly for safety and secondly an external agitation point allows the sheep slurry to be agitated so that it can be removed using a vacuum tank. This avoids having to lift out slats for cleaning out the tank 
with a loader. Water troughs. Locate water troughs 600 mils above floor level to prevent yo's dunging in them. Locate water troughs along the outside of the pen, particularly in straw bedded sheds. This keeps them out of the way when bedding and cleaning out. It also reduces the chances of water troughs being damaged when cleaning out a shed. Each water trough should have its own on-off valve for easy maintenance. Water troughs should be designed so that they're easy to clean out. Ventilation. Good ventilation removes warm, damp air without causing drafts. Air inlet. A correctly designed inlet in the side wall is key to a properly ventilated sheep shed. Ideally, a sheep shed should have a solid wall to just above sheep height. This prevents drafts at sheep level. However, this can reduce the trough space. Above this, the side wall must let in air. The air inlet should be directly below the eaves for the full length of each side of the sheep house or on the lower side of a lean-to type shed. On more exposed sites or on the side facing the prevailing wind, use vented sheeting or Yorkshire boarding to let in air but to keep out the rain. Space boarding is adequate on less exposed sites or on the side facing away from the prevailing wind. Air outlet. A correctly installed open ridge or space sheeting or raised sheeting will make a good outlet. An open ridge should run the full length of the roof apex. The width of the open ridge depends on the width of the shed. Ideally, avoid having a cap over the outlet. Correctly curved or angled upstands on both sides of the ridge outlet will suck out the stale air and repel the rain. The width of this opening depends on the width of the shed. While a ridge cap over the outlet is not recommended, if it is provided, it must stand unobstructed and fully clear of the roof. The distance between the ridge cap and the roof depends on the width of the shed. Space sheeting. When using space sheeting, a 20mm gap is recommended. Passageway width. The width of the passageway depends on the machinery used for feeding both now and in the future. Centre passageways become narrow as modern machinery grows in size. So future-proof your shed by making the passageways wide enough. Tractors should be able to enter from one end and exit through the opposite end. This avoids having to reverse, so avoid dead-end passageways. Passageway height. In a straw-bedded shed, the passageway floor should be 150 to 200 mils higher than the pen floor, so that the yews can still reach feed on the passageway floor despite bedding building up underneath them. This will also reduce the frequency of cleaning out. The disadvantage of this design is that the tractor cannot enter the group pens via the passageway due to the drop. So design the shed so that a tractor can enter the group pens from both cable ends for easy cleaning out. Group sizes. Having yaws in groups of up to 60 yaws is fine. Where they're evenly matched, have the right floor space, meal and father trough space. Too many small groups increases the workload. Because more groups have to be handled, while more pen divisions means more obstacles when bedding and cleaning out. It also increases the cost because extra dividing gates, exit gates and water troughs are required. With small group sizes, a greater proportion of the shed floor space is taken up by passageways. Individual pens. Have at least one individual pen per 10 yos lambing. Ideally, individual pens should be located under the same roof as the group pens. They should be located next to the group pens so there is only a short distance to walk. The route from the group pens to the individual pens needs to be enclosed to prevent yo's escaping. Also locate to allow easy access for machinery, for cleaning out and for moving sheep to grass. Ideally, individual pens should be 1.5 metres by 1.5 metres. Penning. All frequently used gates must be properly hinged for easy use. Each group pen should have a properly hinged small 1 metre wide gate. The bottom board of this small gate should open along with the gate to make it easier to encourage a yo out of the pen. Having all posts in sleeves for easy removal makes cleaning out easier. Alternatively, pen divisions should be hinged so that they can be swung out of the way without removing them. Workstation. The workstation should be under the same roof as the group pens and beside the individual pens. It should include a sink with a draining board. There should be a ready supply of hot water from a mains-fed water heater. 
having an instant supply of hot water is a great encouragement to keeping hands, lambing ropes and other equipment clean. There should also be a fridge, a storage area with room for warming boxes, infrared lamps and orphan lambs. So in summary, whether you're building a new sheep shed or redesigning an existing sheep shed, it must be labour efficient, it must provide the ewe with the correct floor space and the correct feed space, it must provide sheep with a healthy environment and it must provide the shepherd with good working conditions. It must also prevent pollution. If you want more information on sheep shed design, go to www.chagas.ie. My name is Edward Egan. Thanks for watching.